welcome to another weekly update. I hope you're doing well. Um, you may notice slightly delayed this week. Uh, yesterday was a public holiday in the UK. Um, I had planned to do a update anyway, um, and then we decided to go to the beach, so I didn't. Um, so some of the, depending on where you watch this and what you see, uh, you may see yesterday's date or you may see today's date. Doesn't really matter. This is your update for the week, and let's get straight into it. Uh, so last week, we spoke a little bit about some enhancements to the Teams toolkit, specifically around app validation for Microsoft Teams developers, um, which was all kind of super interesting and useful. And I kind of posited that maybe some of that app validation work is coming into Teams toolkit as a replacement for the developer portal stuff, because the developer portal stuff kind of hadn't moved very far, very fast. This week, a uh, big announcement um, for the relaunch, if you like, of or the launch of the enhanced app validation tool in the developer portal. So the developer portal does still have developers working on it. There are still things happening there. And uh, they want us to know that they have made some changes to the app validation tool there. Um, if you've used the app validation tool, you know it's been through a couple of iterations uh, all the way back from when it was its own Teams app, which I thought was really cool. I thought it was a good um, showcase of what Teams apps could do. Then it went to a website. Uh, I think it's fair to say um, there were some issues there, uh, but this enhanced one um, identifies kind of the warnings in your manifests, um, tells you the things that definitely are going to be really problematic, tells you some things you should do, um, and all the rest of it. So kind of good to know. You should see this in the developer portal. Um, I guess it's rolling out now, um, but uh, yeah, there's an announcement about it here. So um I don't know what they're doing uh, with the developer portal. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with Teams Toolkit. It'll be interesting to see. But right now, you've got two ways of doing app validation. Nothing wrong with that. As long as they continue to share the same manifest and stay up to date with that manifest schema um, so that they're not giving conflicting advice, uh, have kind of like that's one of the things you've got. You know, if you're going to have two tools doing app validation, it's really important they stay up to date with the latest version of the manifest schema. If, uh, if they kind of drift, then you're going to get different results with, depending on the tool you use, and that's going to be really problematic. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, next thing, SharePoint framework update. Um, there's a new version uh, coming soon, and the uh, public preview is out of version 1.20. Um, really updates for Viva, Teams, and SharePoint Online. Um, and the thing that I really like about this is an update to cards, um, the Viva cards, connections cards, which when they first came out were kind of basic, but they've been adding to them and adding to them and adding to them. And now uh, actually you can put in HTML as well. So you can put your own HTML in. And I think that really changes the game for developers um, looking to use cards to show various bits of information. Being able to do it as a HTML view, I think is really nice and will really open up lots of different possibilities. Um, it, they were kind of restrictive before, so um, I think it's kind of good. So if you've looked at them in the past and thought, actually, I can't do what I want to do here because it, there's just it's too, it's too restrictive, uh, you know, there's not enough controls to display the information I need to display in the way that I want to display it, um, go have another look at um, certainly version 1.20, which is... Um, in public preview at the moment. Yep, it's the first public preview of this version. So um, it's in public preview now, so you can go try it out um, because you might find that actually it's got the things you need in it now. Cool, cool, cool. Um, there's an update to um, the dev tools for Microsoft Teams tabs. And uh, uh, what is this interesting? So this is interesting because um, if you've used uh, dev tools on like a Chromium browser, so that's the thing where you press F, 11 or f12 i always get it wrong on full screen one is full screen one is dev tools um and uh, that's the thing where you, or you can right click and go inspect you get the console the network trace a whole bunch of information really really helpful in debugging what's going on and you can do the same thing with microsoft teams as well but only if you're using teams in the web browser um, because then it's just a standard web experience it's a web page um, and you can open up the dev tools and see what's going on and that can be helpful um quite often uh, microsoft will mask error messages that they put into the console so you can kind of get more information about what's going on. However, now you can do the same thing with the desktop experience, the Windows desktop experience, um, which previously you've not been able to, even though really the Windows desktop experience is kind of a shell around the web experience um, and uses that web view uh, component. And it's been kind of hard to get the dev tools, but now there's gonna be a much easier way of doing it. So you need to be in public preview 
and uh, then uh, once you've opened a tab, so this is, I guess this is more for tabs, uh, although I'm just looking to see whether that's actually true. Um, it, it says you need a tab, but I don't know, I feel like this might work everywhere, but we'll see. Anyway, you need to be in public preview, um, but then you right click and you can select the Teams icon and then choose open dev tools, which is kind of cool. And you can also do it from an Android device as well. Again, need to be in public preview. So kind of excellent um, for developers of um, tab experiences. Um, I'd be interested to see whether it works across all of Teams because sometimes there's teams where you're, times where you're trying to debug teams behavior, not just your tabs behavior. So it'd kind of be interesting to see whether that is just restricted to just the tab. And it might be, honestly. Um, and in some ways, that's a good thing. If you've tried using um, dev tools in the browser, in the web experience, you'll know there's an awful lot of things going on with teams. And it can be really hard to figure out your tabs calls, your tabs console, your tabs network trace. So in some ways, actually, if they pull all that stuff out and just give you like an isolated, this is the experience of your tab, that would be really nice. By the same account, um, people who like like me, who like to meddle and fiddle, um, it would be kind of cool to see that across all of Teams, but never mind. We'll see whichever way it goes. And finally, uh, something else to tell you about um, are some updated guidelines for creating Copilot extensions. Um, and we talked a little bit as well about um, you know, uh, some of the marketing and the documentation actually getting in front of some of the engineering, which is interesting because it's normally behind. Uh, this is interesting. So there's some updates to Copilot extensions and uh, but specifically the bit I wanted to call out this. I mean, this is a good page, by the way, a good, good set of documentation for um, in, like, you know, a whole bunch of useful things in here. Um, but the thing I really wanted to call out because I know that it's new is down here. Uh, and again, this page has been updated to talk really about the semantic descriptions. I've done a whole video on this. You can look for it um, around how the manifest now is very useful to Copilot in telling Copilot what your plugin does or what your um, extension does. Um, but down here somewhere are sample prompts, which is a new thing that you can now put into the uh, manifest and you can specify the sample prompts uh, for your uh, extension to give users a bit of a clue for how they should interact with your extension. And so, um, yep, there's some guidelines here. Uh, again, the guidelines are, if you want to get it through the App Store, um, these are the guidelines they're going to be looking at and passing and failing on, but they're also just good things to follow, good practice to follow, um, even if you're not planning on putting your extension into the App Store and it's just an organizational one. Um, so you got those there. And then this is the, um, the schema uh, the manifest, how it goes in, uh, there's a sample prompts array, and then you put it in there. So this is all good. Um, we're seeing all this stuff build out, um, you know, all the bits and pieces coming together. It's a whole process, you know, from, you know, getting all these things to work together. And um, it's good to kind of see the documentation catch up as well um, and sort of come in line with everything else that's going on. We are still looking forward, I think, to the... Um, the previews, the public previews of things like declarative copilots. Very excited to see when they will come out. Um, I am absolutely behind on the things I want to do to talk about declarative copilots, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how things go in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, exciting times, and we're kind of coming to the end of that summer period. Uh, we're going to see folks back at their offices or back at their desks um, fairly soon. And then it's going to be gearing up for Microsoft Ignite, which is going to be kind of November time frame. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of other things that, you know, Microsoft would have committed to do in Q3, Q4, um, that will be kind of knocking on the door and of those engineering teams. So they will be, um, they'll be getting those things wrapped up and tested and out. So it's going to be uh, an interesting, exciting period again. Once everyone gets back from their summer break, things will start to um, start to get busy again, I think, which is all good. All right. Enough from me. Uh, have a great one, whatever it is you're doing. I'll see you next time.